But if you saw a renewed America and by implication a renewed West, what would that renewal look like? Like where would we be in five years or 10 years that's different from now? And how might you move us towards that? I think it is an ordering of our society on the things that have always grounded successful, flourishing societies throughout our human history. So, so the left preys on this vacuum of identity with race, gender, sexuality, and then now what you just mentioned, climate. It's serial. Once the climate farce is, and I do think that much of the agenda around it is a farce, one that, once that's revealed and untenable, just as when the COVID-19 pandemic passed, you know, the residual climatism filled the void, once this farce passes and people like yourself, myself, Alex Epstein and Bjorn Lomborg and others are playing roles in exposing this, it'll be something else that fills the void. I don't know what it is, but it'll be something. Now, I think that what I see right now is a lacking in a conservative movement that becomes too, what should I say, uh, lazy, too satisfied, complacent, probably complacent is the right word, with just criticizing that vision and the endless hypocrisies and the nature of how uninspiring it is. And it is uninspiring. But just criticizing it is also uninspiring. And so I want us talking more and acting more on ordering a country, a nation, a society grounded in the value of each individual, a member who is a member of a family, who is a family that is embedded in a nation with commitments to that nation. And yes, I think a revival of a belief that we are one nation under God. That doesn't mean a single religion or a single, you know, religious orthodoxy pushed from on high. In fact, I think it shouldn't be so. But broadly, individual, family, nation, God, as an affirmative alternative to race, gender, sexuality, and climate. And I think that that vision is not only more innately inspiring to young people, to all people, it is grounded in truth, right? We have distinct sources of our identity that we as lost human beings, we as lost human beings who wander in that wilderness, biblically wander in that desert, we need something to ground us. And I think that reviving the value of the individual through hard work and the creation of what you create through hard work and the ability to be proud of that. You know, I was talking yesterday to two entrepreneurs who are themselves already young, actually, not much older than me, multi-billionaires who have, are now on their next creation. I asked him, what motivates you? I think he didn't have an answer other than to say I hard work, actually. I believe in hard work as an ethic, and I believe in creation. That's great. I, I said, I need to help. You need to, I need your help in bottling that up, and I need to put that in the water across this country. But the value of hard work, the value of the family, that there is truth to having a commitment to the unit of two parents in the house with a commitment to their children first. The idea that, you know what? I will take care of my family first before I worry about the starving child in the middle of the Congo. Not to say that there's something wrong with going and helping the starving child in the middle of the Congo, but to say that there's an ordering. I am a self, that that means something. I work hard and create something in the world and I am proud of that and I am an individual agent not riding some tectonic plate of group identity, but there's only ever one you, Dr. Peterson. There's only ever one me. There's only ever one anyone. And that there's inherent value as the individual. The same thing I'll say is that my first commitments are to my family, the children who I brought into this world, the wife with whom I am raising those children, the parents who brought me into this world. Those are my commitments. And then around that, I have commitments as a citizen to this nation that I will go and visit the south side of Chicago or Kensington in the middle of Philadelphia before I go take pictures with some child in Myanmar so I can post it on my social media account and feel better about myself. I'll get to Myanmar later. I'll get to the Congo later. But, but I'm a citizen of this nation and that that means something to me too. So I take care of myself through my own hard work and dedication. I take care of my family. I take care of my nation, that I'm proud of these things, that I believe that we're a nation under God. And then yes, as human beings, we are all equal in the eyes of each other because 
in the Christian tradition or Judeo-Christian tradition, you'll say, we're made in the image of God. I'm raised in a Hindu household. We say it's that God resides in each of us, but whatever formulation it is, that there is a higher power. And then once we've taken care of all of that, then we can get to, you know, Ethiopia or, or you know, South Africa or Myanmar or wherever else one might go. But I think what we see right now is a substitution of that effect, right? Intensely worried about the climate apocalypse or intensely worried about some fringe problem that doesn't affect your own community or your family or your nation at home as a substitute for the actual things that in a time-tested way ground us as human beings. And so I'm still so, just scratching so, the surface, but at least gives you a taste yeah, of no, how no, I view no, that no, future. 